I do not like what I'm seeing, folks. Right now, what I'm seeing is that a lot of people who have been cautious all year, people who even way back at the last weeks of February were like, oh no, this bug is going to be bad. People who were cautious here in the summer, who are like, well, we've bounced too fast, and just when the economy is reopening, it's gone up so much that we're now suspicious. And finally, people right here that were cautious before the election, that were thinking, oh no, cases are going up, lockdowns are coming, and the election is going to be bad. But a lot of these cautious people are now throwing caution to the wind. I think the fact that the market threats this year never really panned out, and now with the positive vaccine news, people are just blinded to the risks of the market. And yes, you should be understandably sick and tired of reading fear-mongering posts about the market, and then going and seeing the market just keep going up day after day. Everyone has been warning of a crash for quite some time, and you are right to be burnt out of it. But just because you have an excuse to be burnt out does not mean that you don't have a responsibility to be aware of the risks. Even during the bull run in pre-COVID years, you'd see people piling in to take advantage of the bull market, but you'd also see a huge level of skepticism. People didn't think that every day it was just guaranteed to keep going up, but now what we're seeing is a lot of people just totally threw their skepticism out, and they say, oh, well, a vaccine's coming, and oh, well, it went up the rest of the year, so why isn't it guaranteed to keep going up forever? And when people in mass decide to throw out their skepticism, that's how you know we have a problem. A lot of people right now are assuming that it's all berries and roses after we leave the pandemic. And yeah, it is berries and roses in the sense that we could actually go outside and smell the berries and roses without putting our masks on, but it's not all berries and roses in terms of the economy. There's a lot of legitimate risks here. This is not going to be a video where I tell you the market is going to crash. This is not going to be a video where I tell you to be scared. This is a video where we value preparation over prediction, where we value being prepared over having a crystal ball. And of course, most importantly, this is going to be a video where you hit that ravishing like button. Okay, so again, to start, I could name the usual suspects. Hospitalizations are increasing. Stimulus is still nowhere to be found. Restrictions are being re-implemented. These are things that we've spoken about time and time again. But again, in this video, we're not talking about the current risks. If you want to hear my thoughts on the current risks, go watch the Will the Market Ever Crash video. Like I said in that video, it's very possible that the market is actually looking at a cheery future instead of looking at what's happening right now. The point of this video is to actually ask the question of whether that post-pandemic future is actually cheery. So what does the world look like at the end stages of the pandemic? Well, to paraphrase Fauci, he's saying that we'll get it under control, but we'll still have resurgences for quite some time. That means that certain areas of our economy could be struggling with restrictions on and off for quite a while after the pandemic ends. It's inevitable that we have some areas in the country where vaccine usage isn't high enough for herd immunity, and it's inevitable that the virus comes in from other parts of the world. He says we will not get it under control until the world gets it under control. When I hear this, my first thought is, well, what about tourism? Obviously, if we can't even get the vaccine out enough in 2021, it will take much longer for the rest of the world to vaccinate their own people. As you look at cruise stocks like Carnival Cruises and Royal Caribbean, Carnival almost doubled on the vaccine news. Yet, when are they actually going to be able to reopen? When will it be safe for their majority of older senior citizens to board a big ship and go to ports in foreign countries that expose them potentially to the virus? If we could see resurgences in a well-vaccinated country, assuming that's what happens to the US, well, what is to stop cruise ships going to foreign locations from having outbreaks? These cruise ships go to many, many different locations. If they stop in one location with a resurgence, or if they stop in one location and they just happen to find one or two bad cases, and then that case infects somebody on the ship, and then they're on that ship, and everybody in the ship gets infected, well, then that's always a huge risk as long as this virus is out there. I see tons and tons of people buying and holding crew stocks, thinking that if they just buy it now, in two or three months, they're going to make tons of money. I have no doubt that demand will eventually come back, but how long does this take? Does this take two to three months? Not a chance in hopping over to planes. This is certainly a more resilient industry, but still, how long does resurgence threat and unequal vaccination across the country, hurt demand. Are you operating in countries that aren't vaccinated as well? How many years is this going to take until people can feel safe? Also, while talking about all of these risks, I do have to say one thing that isn't a risk. It is risk-free to get four free stocks with Webull. Yes, that's four free stocks. It used to be two free stocks and it was three. Now it is four free stocks with 
for free stocks. Well, you can't really put all you have to do is sign up and deposit with our link in the description below. Webull is an excellent platform. So aside from the free stock, you're also going to get a very, very powerful commission-free broker. Okay, next, real estate. So the pandemic has taken many people out of the office and into the home office. And after the pandemic, the truth is that many people will never return. With large portions of our economy working from home permanently, or at least in some hybrid fashion, you start having businesses spend less on commercial real estate. But think about this for a second. What happens when you have an office building go kaput? When people stop going to an office building, what happens? Well, the coffee shops and stores and restaurants around that office building, all the employees of the office aren't visiting those anymore. Gas stations that fuel their commute around that area aren't visited anymore either. And if you are leaving the city in entirety, all of the restaurants, malls, doctors, retail stores, movie theaters, taxis, plumbers, teachers, all of that, all lose your business. So this restructuring is a huge threat to the real estate market as we know it today. But aside from that, small businesses are also really hurting in this pandemic and will continue to hurt moving forward. What we have seen in this crisis is an extrapolation of much of the capital and business that was going to small businesses now going into corporations. Why? Because corporations had the funds to weather the storm. And so when all the small businesses die, all that customer base goes over to the corporations. At restaurants, for example, CNBC pointed out that Olive Garden's parent, Darden Restaurant, has had extremely strong performance and that should terrify people. It said the small private restaurants in the economy haven't been able to cope with the crisis, but these big national public brands have the capital to weather the storm. And thus, once everything ends, you end up in a world where all of that restaurant demand comes back, but there's no more small businesses left. And so it goes all back to the big chains. But this point is very true across the economy. There are many small businesses that have shut down as a result of the pandemic and with 60% of business closures permanent, it's no doubt that the remaining players will take the extra business. To be fair, since corporations are a part of the stock market, you'd expect, well, the stock market to do well with that. But that doesn't speak anything about the long-term complications of an economy that's more structured towards corporations than an economy structured towards small businesses. And it says nothing about how buying power is going to change and how that, as a result, is going to hurt corporations in the long run. What about debt? Public debt has soared as a result of this pandemic and will be paying for those stimulus checks and capital infusions for decades to come. Individual states are already talking about needing to be bailed out by the federal government. Meanwhile, the federal government grapples with ever-increasing deficit spending. What does this mean for our economy, stance in the world? Next, interest rates. Right now, the market is in part being propped up by cheap money. With low interest rates and lofty inflation goals, it's almost like getting free money. And people are taking advantage of that and buying real estate and investing in the market and generally just spending more money. But at some point, the Fed will raise interest rates again. And at some point, they'll need to unload their balance sheet that ballooned under the crisis measures this year. And at some point, it's inevitable that this will put downward pressure on the market. Now, when that happens, whether that be next year, two years, or three years, nobody knows. But this is a looming threat. But anyways, folks, those are really just some of the big risks that I see after we end this pandemic. And while it's very important for you to be prepared for risks, it's also important for you to be optimistic. Regardless of whether we experience slowing down as we end this pandemic or in the years after this pandemic, at least ending the pandemic means that we're on the right track. It means that eventually we will prevail. I just want to make sure that you're not convincing yourself that prevailing means that in the next couple years, you can just double down on every dip and keep making money. If you're trading stocks, you need to always be aware of all of the risks. And you need to make sure that you're managing your risk in every single position that you take just because we have looming threats on the horizon. And if you're not prepared, well, you're going to get your rear end handed to you. The stock market is going to hand you your rear end. It's going to hand you it like this. It's gonna be like, hey, you're gonna, well, how did you get my rear end? And I do not want to see that happen to you folks. Okay, folks, well, anyways, I hope that you saw value in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the lovely comment section below or join us on the lovelier Zip Trader Circle. If you think our morning briefings would be helpful to you, you can get them by joining us at Zip Trader U, which is linked below with, of course, a coupon code that will get you $50 off. Zip Trader U will forge you into a trader from the ground up with our lessons, private chat, and morning briefings. Obviously, not everybody needs a program, but for folks who are struggling and feel like they're sort of aimlessly wandering around the stock market, well, I recommend just reading over ZipTraderU.com to see what we offer and whether or not it is a good fit. But anyways, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, one shan't forget to subscribe.